Questions for Reflection The words Moses speaks to the people of Israel are spoken with the authority of God Himself. He was God's messenger. So close was Moses to the Lord that we read these words in the book of Exodus. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. That's Exodus 33, 11. It is these commands and the willingness of the people to obey them, meditate upon them, and hand them on to their children, which made Israel unique among the nations. She was chosen by the Lord to be his instrument, through which his loving plan for every nation was to be revealed. The church is, in a sense, a new Israel. Christians are grafted into the vine through Jesus Christ. All of the promises made to Israel and through her prophets are fulfilled in Jesus. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, citing Jesus' own words as recorded in Matthew chapter 5, explains it this way, and I quote, At the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus issued a solemn warning in which he presented God's law given on Sinai during the first covenant in light of the grace of the new covenant. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them to others will be called great in the kingdom of heaven." End quote. And the Catechism continues, saying this, Jesus, Israel's Messiah, and therefore the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, was to fulfill the law by keeping it in its all-embracing detail, according to his own words, down to the least of these commandments. He is, in fact, the only one who could keep it perfectly. On their own admission, the Jews were never able to observe the law in its entirety without violating the least of its precepts. This is why every year on the Day of Atonement, the children of Israel ask God's forgiveness for their transgressions of the law. The law indeed makes up one inseparable whole. And St. James recalls whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it." End quote. How do we view the Ten Commandments and the law revealed through Moses? The psalmist sings of the special role which Israel was given in the plan of God. He calls the Jewish people the people of the covenant to praise him for having chosen them to have this special relationship. This is why the Psalms were such an integral part of the life of the Jewish people. And this is why Christians grafted into the promises to Israel and inheritors of the promises to Abraham, our father in faith, have also given them such a prominence in our own daily prayer and worship. With that in mind, how do we view the responsorial psalm at Mass? Do we listen to the words? Do we sing or chant or even say the response? Do we see ourselves in the relationship David sings of with such affection? Do we regularly read the Psalms? In the Gospel appointed for this Lenten weekday, the vital role which the Law of Moses still plays in the plan of God manifested in the Church is emphasized by the proclamation of these strong words from Jesus to the disciples. Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the Law or the Prophets. I have come not to abolish but to complete them. In truth, I tell you, till heaven and earth disappear, not one dot, not one little stroke is to disappear from the law until all of its purpose is achieved. And Jesus continues in these words, Therefore, anyone who infringes even one of the least of these commandments 
and teaches others to do the same will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the person who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven." End quote. We are his contemporary disciples. Are we listening? The Catholic Catechism, citing several New Testament passages, also helps us understand this vital teaching. And I quote the Catechism now. Jesus did not abolish the law of Sinai, but rather fulfilled it. See Matthew 5, 17 to 19. With such perfection, see John 8, 46, that he revealed its ultimate meaning, see Matthew 5, 33, and redeemed the transgressions against it, Hebrews 9, 15. That's paragraph 592 of the Catechism. So how often do we read the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and the Bible? How often do we use them as food for our own prayer life? Do we take the time to study them? Can we recite the Ten Commandments? If not, Lent is a good time to change.